Okay, this is worksheet number two, and going through the multiple choice questions, except for question 11, I'll do that separately. Okay, and question number one, it's to do with the remainder theorem, because I'm given a remainder of 15. So I've divided by x, so if I on my calculator do p of 3 equals 15, solve for k, and this is what I entered in the calculator, k equals 12 comes up, that's answer b. In question number two, a possible domain is this. So what rules might fit? Well, I've gone through each of these. In A, my only problem is X can't equal negative 1, but X can be negative, so that's not the domain. In number 2, the inside of the logarithm is going to be bigger than 0, therefore I can't include negative 1, therefore B is not correct. In C's case, the bit underneath the square root's got to be bigger than zero, can't equal zero, so again, I can't equal negative one. In D's case, the bit under the square root's got to be greater than or equal to zero, so I like D. And in E's case, the bottom can be absolutely anything because the denominator will never equal zero when x squared plus one, therefore that domain is all real numbers, so therefore D is my answer. In number four, I'm going from point P to point Q. So I'm going from 1, negative 2, down here to Q, which is 3, negative 6. Okay, so I've gone from 1, negative 2 to 3, negative 6. And looking at the structure, they've given me function notation. Therefore, on my grid, function notation is on the right, so it's opposite to what you expect. So I can see that of the x's, there are only translations, 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 no change, translations. And since I've gone from 1 to 3, um, it can't be D have no change in the x because x has changed. Since they're all translations, I want to go two units to the right. Therefore, I'm looking for F of x minus 2. And the only one that there is is C. Also, if I'm going for the y values, I've got multiply by a third, multiply by two, multiply by three, multiply by three, multiply by three. So they're all dilations. The dilation that takes negative two to a negative six is multiplied by three, confirming that C is the right answer. Looking at question number five, I've drawn this on my calculator. I can see that I have... Um, a turning point at negative 1 and a turning point at 1. And this function will have an inverse function only if it is 1 to 1. So I've got to pick the domain that gives me a 1 to 1 function. Now this one, minus infinity to 0, goes all the way to 0, therefore is many to 1. Negative 1 to 0 is great because it's just in here, and negative 1 to 0 domain does give you 1 to 1, and I like B. 0 to 2 goes from 0 to 2, therefore it's many to 1. 0 to infinity is also many to 1, and all real numbers is many to 1. So B is the only one. I'll do question 11 as a separate video. Question number 17. Um, I've got this. I'm going to draw that on the calculator. And when I draw that on the calculator, I get this particular graph. A tangent's drawn. So if I draw a tangent here, I'm looking for the y-intercept to be 0c. So this is going to be c down here. Um, the maximum possible value of c. Well, if I draw my tangent in this position, then my y-intercept's going to be lower. The only place that I can draw my tangent is at negative 1, and my tangent will be a horizontal line, which will mean C will be negative 1. Therefore, B is the only option that I can take. And question number 18, um, the domain and range of this thing here. Okay, the rule for the domain of F of G is the domain of G, and the domain of G is minus infinity to zero, so therefore only A and B are possible answers.
because they're the only ones that have a domain, which is the domain of G. I need to put G inside of F and graph it on a calculator over the domain minus infinity to zero, over the domain minus infinity to zero, um, gives this particular graph, and its range is zero to infinity, therefore B is my right answer.